Welcome to this week's edition of the St. Paul Podcast. I'm Katie Warren, one of the pastors here at St. Paul Lutheran Church, located in the heart of Davenport, Iowa. Right here, each week, you can hear a message to inspire your walk with God and hear beautiful music to fill your life. Let this podcast be your occasion to contemplate some of the deepest things in life, just as I hope it helps faith come alive for you. Hello, and welcome to the St. Paul Podcast. I'm Mac Mullins, one of the pastors here at St. Paul. Whether you're driving to work, relaxing at home, maybe you're out on a jog, my hope is the message of God's Word brings you some amount of comfort and curiosity this week. Trust is a fickle thing. We don't really notice when we have it, but once it's broken, the emptiness and pain from the trust that's no longer there is all we can think about cheating partners, a friend who tells us a lie, a promise not kept or broken. Broken trust is at the heart of any fractured relationship. A 2023 Pew Research poll 
found that only 16% of Americans, regardless of political affiliation, trust our government. And that number has been on a steep downward trend since the 1960s. This can't be blamed only on partisan politics. When our political system fails to uphold the promises it makes, when it fails to take care of the hardworking, the sick, the imprisoned, those most in need, the damage done to our society lasts decades. God knows a thing or two about broken trust, about promises not kept. Today's scripture comes from the prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testament. Through Ezekiel, God expresses all of the frustration, anger, disappointment that God feels at Israel, having yet again broken their covenant with the Lord. But today's passage, about a noble cedar tree, is a glimpse at a new promise, a new future God will make with all of humanity. As deep as God's pain is from our betrayal, God's compassion and forgiveness reaches far deeper. So take a moment of quiet and hear these words from the book of Ezekiel, the 17th chapter. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender shoot from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will transplant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will transplant it, and it will produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree. I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. Listen now to my own thoughts on the hope that comes from God's new promise. How often do you think about trust? Trust is a virtue I think we all value deeply, but I certainly don't spend my every waking moment thinking about it. I even find it difficult to define trust without using the word itself. So here's a few examples from the thesaurus. Trust means dependability. Trust means faithfulness. Trust means devotion. Trust means fidelity. Trust is all of these things, and an important part of trust is that we ought to be able to take it for granted. We take for granted that we can trust our spouses, our partners, our significant others. We take for granted that we can trust the sun to rise in the morning and set in the evening. We take for granted that we can trust our savings will be in the bank tomorrow, that other drivers will obey the rules of the road, that when we keep or close our eyes to sleep, we will open them again in a few hours. Now, our brains, yours and mine, are probably screaming at this point, but we know that that isn't completely true, and it's not. We take those things for granted, but we also know that the worst could happen. The economy can collapse. Someone might be drinking and driving and swerve into our lane. We certainly could die peacefully in our sleep. The rational thinking, intellectual part of us just hates trust. At our deepest level, we know that trust in anything, whether it's other people, trust in ourselves, trust even in God, is irrational. We place our trust in others. We take it for granted, but that trust can be broken and shaken so quickly and so easily. It's broken trust. That's the topic of God's revelation to the prophet Ezekiel in today's reading. We don't often read from the book of Ezekiel. You may know the story of the Valley of Dry Bones. We read it every Easter morning. But beyond this, Ezekiel gets little attention. And it's really 
no wonder, because when you begin reading it, you discover most of Ezekiel is accusing the exiled people of Israel of violating their covenant with God, of breaking God's trust, and then deserving all of the punishment that has come their way and has yet to be inflicted upon them. The verses just before this vision of the cedar tree They describe God's accusations towards Israel's king. Once again, Israel has placed their trust in their earthly king, in other people, even in other gods, and surrounded by enemies on all sides and at his lowest point, the king of Israel, having already given up his trust in the Lord, he signs a treaty with the king of Babylon, swearing loyalty to him not to the Lord. Understandably, God is furious for abandoning the covenant and breaking His oath to God. The king will be captured and tried in Babylon, and the armies of Israel will be wiped out and scattered. Nothing will be left of this earthly kingdom that the king and the people of Israel have put all of their trust on. It really surprises me how different God's vision and understanding of trust is compared to us humans. While we do indeed take trust for granted, there's always that nagging voice in the back of our head, deep in our gut, that tells us to prepare for that trust to be violated. We sign prenuptial agreements. We have emergency savings, we have health insurance, home insurance, all because our fear and our anxiety doesn't place a lot of faith in trust. But God does. When we hear God's anger towards the chosen people, never does God say, well, it's time for plan B, time for the backup people I've chosen. I knew that you wouldn't keep your promises, so I had your enemies prepare for war just in case. I didn't think you would actually trust my forgiveness, my mercy, my love for you, so now you won't get anything in return. God never says this. God is angry because God is hurt. God is hurt because God's trust is unending. It's abiding. It's the kind of trust that truly is for granted because the Lord doesn't have the same fears and anxieties that we do. It doesn't matter to God that we violated God's trust in the past. When God forgives, God forgives completely. When God loves, God loves completely. So when God trusts us, that trust is complete and total trust. And when we violate it, when we abandon that trust, God is devastated. The same way we might be devastated when someone we love with our entire being violates our love and trust. But unlike our devastation, unlike our anger and resentment, God's pain and hurt doesn't last all that long. No sooner does the Lord lash out against the unfaithful king of Israel than does God give a promise of hope in the verses we read this morning. Just as soon as we have broken our promises to the Lord, does God make a new promise, one of restoration, of hope, of a new life and future? God describes this allegory of a cedar tree planted on top of a mountain, the mountain height of Israel itself, And this isn't an American cedar, mind you. I don't know how much you know about trees, but the cedars we have in North America, they grow tall, but the needles and the branches, they grow tight against the trunk, almost in a teardrop shape. The cedars in the Levant in Palestine, they are very different. Sometimes we call them Lebanon cedars. They are mammoth things. They can grow 130 feet tall, and have 25 feet around at the trunk, they're huge. They dwarf everything around them in that arid climate. These colossal creations, they're exactly the kind of new kingdom 
God promises will grow out of the remnants, out of the foundation of Israel. Though we have abandoned our promises, and though we have treated trust as something cheap, God is going to try again, and the results will be enormous. This is the same promise Jesus makes about the mustard seed in the gospel according to Mark. From a small seed, the largest shrub will be cultivated and grown. So too with this cedar tree. This isn't our work. God does not promise us a city, a temple, a fortress, anything that we humans might claim as something of our own making or doing. No one can claim the creation of a tree this magnificent, except the creator of all things. This new promise is completely and totally God's, and it will change our lives. A tree that tall, all the way at the peak of a mountain, well, the shade will reach far and wide. It's shade for us to rest and be comforted. All those fears, those anxieties we have in life, do we have enough money for hospital bills? Have I saved enough for retirement? If I ask them to marry me, will they say yes? The shade of God is a place where we can lay those anxieties to rest. It doesn't take away the mystery, the unknowability of life, but the fear that life can't go on, that disappears. God's comfort for us Jesus' own promise to us in His life and death gives us the opportunity to set aside the things that burden us. We're freed from the things that hold us down, and we can lay them at the foot of this tree. And in that freedom, we might discover new opportunities. Birds, they don't just hang out in trees. There's a relationship between the bird and the tree. Ezekiel doesn't mention them offhandedly. By eating the tree's fruit and nesting in its branches, the birds help spread its seed wherever they go. And this is exactly how this new promise of God impacts our own lives. God doesn't just take away our burdens, but gives us new purpose, too. We receive the fruit those seeds, we receive them in Jesus Christ. St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians that Christ's death was for all people. Therefore, we all have died. We aren't the same anymore. In death, we've ditched our worries on the side of the road, maybe under the shade of a tree, and now we no longer live for ourselves. We don't live trying to save our life all the time. We live for others the same way Christ lived. And St. Paul calls this a new creation, a new creation whose shade reaches all of us, one that God offers to us over and over again. When we accept it, when we allow our lives to be shaped and changed by this new thing, that's when we begin to spread those seeds. It can be an intentional moment, maybe a conversation over coffee, by remodeling a home for those who need affordable housing. Sometimes it's more subtle, forgiving someone who's hurt us, by engaging with someone who's lonely and rejected Sometimes those seeds are spread by standing up and being the person God has made you to be, no longer willing to hide just to make other people comfortable. Or it could be the opposite, Put as, putting aside our own self, our own needs or wants when they have grown to consume us and prevent us from loving the people in front of us. Just like the people of ancient Israel, conquered and exiled by the Babylonians, we break God's trust all the time. We're sinners. We know it. We claim it. But unlike us, with our gut instincts to believe that trust will be broken, by human standards, God is more foolish than we are. God, despite all of the evidence to the contrary, God has made a new promise a new covenant. 
God has promised to us a new life of rest and restoration, a life rooted in God's own strength, mercy, and forgiveness, a life that we can be a part of and join in. This gift of new life is the very gift of Christ Jesus. And if we open ourselves to it, if we take it, we might discover that we will be changed. It will surprise us. It will probably even scare us at times. But by trusting in the Lord, this person who rushes to take the risk to trust and love us, even despite all the evidence that we will be unfaithful again, if we trust in this Lord and fight back against our own gut and reflexes, we'll discover how wonderful, how generous, how freeing life in the shade of this tree can be. Amen. Let's pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil, for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now receive this blessing. Shade may bring coolness, but the shade of God's love instills us with courage and hope. May that love inspire us to have the courage and fortitude to be faithful not only to the Lord, but to each other. May broken trust be healed and repaired and may we all live in God's grace. Amen. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. Thank you for your support of the ministries of St. Paul Lutheran Church. Our commitment to endeavors that lend hope to other people stretches across the country and around the world. We hope that in a good way, you feel a great part of that reach. So tune in next Thursday for another edition of the St. Paul Podcasts.